I can hear my daddy praying. I can hear my mama singing. Oh, it's the only reason why I'm standing here. said prayer was the master key. If I pray, then God would answer me. Oh, he really did. He showed me his care. Oh, his care. Hey, yeah. Every prayer today is a seed for tomorrow. So keep praying. Keep praying, oh, hold on to the faith and the blessing will follow. Keep praying, keep praying, we are living proof, oh, what holding on can do. Every tear that's fallen, mm. he can feel our pain and burdens. Yeah, he hears every cry to heaven. So let it rise. Oh, every prayer today is a seed for tomorrow.
So I'm sitting here with Ryan O'Fay. How you doing, man? I'm doing so well, Thomas. Awesome. You are a incredible young man, man of destiny, man of faith, yes, sir. a man with a voice like leather and lavender. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that a, is that an accurate that's de depiction? Good, that's my first time hearing that, but that's good. Yeah, you know why? Because I made that up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> um, we're also sitting with a man who um, who loves to sing, yeah. loves to worship God, and he uh, he's singing with a with a an amazing movement. I'd even call it called yeah. Maverick City Mo uh, Music. Yes, sir. And uh, we're excited to to sit here and just chat. Man, Thomas, thank you for having me. <laughs> the whole family, Godspeed Productions. I'm just like so excited and I'm just glad to dive into this. Fantastic. Well, let's dive into it. Your name is Ryan. It means little king. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Listen, I don't I don't know if my parents knew that they were calling me that. Um, first day out the hospital, um, my name was actually Kojo, which is um, a Ghanaian we get like automatic names for the day of the week that you're born. And so being born on Monday, Kojo means Monday born. And, and I was named after my dad who was named after his dad. So my name was just like Kojo Boyofe. And they were watching a Manchester United game. We lived in London at the time. And Ryan Giggs had scored a goal and my, my dad was screaming, Ryan Giggs, Ryan Giggs. <laughs> and my mom was like, you know what? That's a kind of a nice name. And they just doop, added it on top. And so Ryan Kojo Boy. I'm giving out my whole government name, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's where I got the name, and it means little king, and and it's just so crazy. I I think it's a befitting name given everything that's happened in my life. That's fantastic. Well, talk to us a little bit about that Genesis story where you started off as this little king, yeah. and now we know you as this grown man. But where did where did where did life start for you? Yeah, I mean, earliest recollection of life for me uh, was in Ghana. We had moved to Ghana when I was two years old, and. Um, my dad had, he'd actually moved to the States shortly after to go study and do his master's, but we were there and it was myself and my mom, I actually lived with a cousin as well. And we would, like my mom would always put on like worship and preaching and like we we were not watching Power Rangers or nothing. <laughs> we were just like glued to, to worship and it didn't feel weird at all. Like it actually pulled something on the inside of me mm. and I think that I gravitated to it at, even at such a tender age. And and I told my mom, I'm like, mom, listen, I have to sing. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but if I don't sing, I will explode. Like, I will not be here anymore. And she's like, no, like, shut up. And like, we were going back and forth. And then finally she's like, okay, sing. So I sang and she's like, oh my goodness, what in the world is going on? <laughs> she was like, she was so tempted. She like, she asked my cousin, you sing too? <laughs> That it didn't really work out over there, but it was just so, it was so cool um, following that. She literally invited everybody in our neighborhood and they were coming over like every 30 minutes. Like, hey, we heard you can sing, like just sing for us and let's hear. And they were all like, this is amazing for, for a little kid. So that's kind of how it started. I just felt that pull. And she always tells me stories even aside of that, like when I'd like crawl out the crib and like turn on music or whatever. But I think I'd always just been drawn to it, um, even from a young age. That's fantastic. You know, something that I absolutely love about your story and that story of your mom in particular, yeah. calling the neighborhood to hear you sing, yeah. is that she was validating your purpose yeah. from the time that you were very young. Yes. And I think, you know, all of us need to validate ourselves, right. but we also need to be validated. Yes. And you had that at that moment. You yes. knew you wanted to sing. But yes. at the same time, you had other people validating that purpose. Yes. So that's a beautiful thing. That's, and I think that that's the, the combination or the recipe that mm -hmm. we need as human beings yes. to grow into ourselves. 100%. You know, so it's great that you had that support and, that's, yeah. and that that was happening for you at a young age. I agree. I think that, like, there are so many voices that we'll hear. And it's good that the people that are closest to us would affirm us and like validate us and tell us like, I see what you're doing. I see this on the inside of you, even though you may think like this is just a hobby. Like, I think there's more that can be done with that. And I think for me, that was my parents at a tender age. Like my mom brought the neighborhood, but when we had moved to the States, she literally like, we went to a church the first week. 
they had no singers. She's like, my son's a singer. He's going to sing for this church. Wow. And I literally became the church as like worship leader. How old were you? I was six years old. Wow. <laughs> and man. like, they would be like stuffing money in my pockets. I was like, man, if this is the beginning, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this is great. And she would always do that for me. My dad enrolled me in piano lessons. He's not musical at all. And he would actually take those lessons with me. Wow. Like we would go together and he would take the lessons. And my dad's an accountant. He was struggling out there being a grown <laughs> man on the keys. And we're learning like like duck, duck, goose. And, but it's like they, they, they cared that much to, I think, just push me. And I don't even know if they knew what it would become. I think they just wanted, they just wanted me to pursue everything that was within my heart. You know? And so I'm super grateful for that. You know, that's something that um, very few people on the planet mm. – very few people on the planet have that story. Parents mm. who are that invested right. in seeing you become who you were designed to be. Right. So that definitely is a blessing. I can see why you're, you're grateful. Yeah. Um, so you Lovely. started life off in the UK at, and you lived there till the age of two. Mm -hmm. Then you moved from the UK to Ghana, to, to Ghana. Yes, sir. and you lived there until you were five. five. Uh -huh. And then at five, you moved to Columbus. Mm -hmm where you were singing in church and they're putting money in your pockets. They're putting it in my <laughs> pockets. Okay. I was helping my dad pay that light bill. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Um, but then, although you, you and your family love being in Ghana, mm -hmm. you were called away from Ghana to this, another new land. Yeah. And that was Toronto, Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did your family move from Ghana? Man, I think that uh, my parents were always in search of, uh, of the best life that they could offer us. Um, and that just involved safety, education, financial stability, like mm. all of the above. Um, also having a good community with the church and all that type of stuff. And so we'd moved um, to Canada um, really just because it, it worked the best for the whole family right. at the time. It just worked the best for us to have like a complete and like um, holistic life and and I'm, I am really grateful for it I mean Canada has been a, a pretty great country and things have worked out well and Canada offered opportunities and gave me relationships and you just never know what will happen if you were somewhere else and mm. so I, I definitely have that level of love uh, for Canada and, and this is yeah this is where my parents brought us I, I cried I'm not gonna lie I was moving <laughs> from America so I cried and I think that was a really tough year honestly mm. like a lot of a lot of movements like I literally moved eight elementary schools in eight years from grade one wow. through grade eight and never really kept any friends. But I think that truthfully, all of that has been intentional. And it's like just getting used to maybe not always being in the same place yes. and having to adapt and meet people and grow relationships and just being comfortable, like not necessarily always being where you would consider home. So yeah, it's been, it's been a great journey. I love that. You know, um, moving to a new place always brings new challenges. Yeah. When you first moved to Canada, you mentioned, you know, you, uh, you know, you didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. You didn't even like opening the freezer, let alone coming to to cold Canada. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, yeah. you when you came here, you yeah. actually developed a new passion. So right. you're in middle school, mm -hmm. and you kind of dis you discovered sports, athletics. Talk yes. to me a little bit about your love for sports growing up. Yes, I I loved sports. I'm. I think when I was younger, like right before we left the States, I had discovered that I had asthma. And mm. so um, it was weird. Like I got, one day I got really sick and I started coughing and, and like I literally blacked out and woke up in a hospital room. Mm. And coming out of that, I think, um, I don't know what it was, but I think I wanted to be like more healthy. And I think I wanted to kind of challenge myself in that way. Like I didn't want asthma to define me. I wanted to be able to like overcome that. And so I got into like a lot of track and field. I got into like anything, basketball, football, volleyball. Like I literally played everything throughout middle school. And when I got to high school, I think my favorite sport of all was football. There was just something so like great about being on a team. There's so many people, the camaraderie, um, the practices, the grind where you got to wake up and exercise and, and obviously the victories that when you like score or something like that it was just like it was for me like I just absolutely loved it and like I gave like 
everything I had to that. Like, I, I pushed music to the side. I'm like, listen, that stuff is, <laughs> singing at the church with the money stuff is cool, but this is fun, like, and you're with people. And that was, I think, that I really did um, gravitate towards that um, throughout high school, and I eventually ended up stepping away from it um, just just to go back to music. But that's where my heart was at a point, and I know that your heart was there also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can attest to that, you know. Um, you know, that's something we share. It's funny. There are a few things that we have in common. Mm -hmm. You know, we're both bo born in January. Yes. We both fell in love with football in high school. Yeah. We both played the same position in yeah. football in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but also, something you might not have known about me is I also struggled with terrible asthma. And wow. it was when I decided to start playing football that I, my body re like got rid of it rejected asthma. It, it rejected yeah, it. Yeah. So it just that's just crazy. I didn't know that about you that you had asthma. I, I also was hospitalized for my asthma. What? Which is crazy. There's a, there are a lot of it's similarities. That's not. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's, that's interesting. But um, you know, you're talking about the camaraderie and um, just that team. Yeah. It's funny because you're doing that today. You make music with yeah. this big team. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But you make music with, with a few big teams. A couple big teams. You know, teams. a couple big yes, teams. Sir. Yes, and sir. Um, it's interesting that, you know, you're, it's almost like that prepared you for, yeah. for, for what you were going to do as you got older. I think those life skills are transferable. Like 100%. Being, being with people, leading, mm -hmm. also being led. Right. Know, I think it's, it's all, every, I think everything that happens in our lives, it's not, it's all intentional. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So you, you ended up saying, you know, football, I've given you a lot. Yeah. And I don't think that this is, you know, this, this relationship is going to stay the same. Right. And you ended up um, going back to music. You know, Destiny has a way of knocking it again. Yeah. So I know that at, when you were a senior in high school, you're just finishing high school. You decided to come see a friend in Ottawa, mm -hmm. Pastor Kofi. That's right. Tell us what happened on that trip and how yeah. you got felt called to Ottawa. Yeah, I so I came to visit uh, PK or Pastor Kofi. I came to visit my best friend at the time, um, still now, in Ottawa. And we were just driving around, and I'm like, there's something so different about this place in comparison to, like, the GTA or anywhere that I'd been. I'm like, there's just, like, peace. Like, it was serene like you could hear your thoughts you could hear god and maybe that's because there weren't a lot of people around but i don't know it was something really just special about um this place and so i told myself um i'm like you know what next year i'm probably gonna come to school out here mm. and i just felt i felt a tug in that direction like i just felt like this is where i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be at this place at this time with these people mm. and, and so I made that move and it was really a step of faith like my parents are like what are you doing like <laughs> football scholarships like what are you what is this like it's like this is so random and and I just really followed my heart on it and shoot I've been here since <laughs> wow so you yeah. went to school here what what school did you go to Carlton University you're Ravens. a raven <laughs> awesome. yeah yeah awesome yeah. what did you study studied business um also studied some poli sci and so, yeah, finished that up and worked in the in the workforce, even in government and HR and and um, compensation as well. And yeah, that's that cool. Was, that was where that took me. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah. you know, it's nice to have kind of an array of life experiences. I feel mm -hmm. like if you do different things, it actually prepares you for many situations in whatever it is that you do decide to do. True. You know, I think it it uh, it gives you the latitude to. Uh, to traverse through life with a little bit of wisdom. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, God. that's great. So, you know, nothing comes without conflict. Mm -hmm. Here you are, this, you know, 18-year-old coming to Ottawa, mm -hmm. first time away from your parents. Yes, sir. You know, um, you enjoyed, you know, the parties like anybody else. And, I had to. <laughs> yeah, yes. 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 And, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, like, you know, for, for many people, like many people, you came to, you know, a point where life had to chin check you a little bit. You yeah. were on a, you were on a, on a, on a trip coming back from Montreal. What happened? Yeah. This is a, this is yeah. a, a serious story. Yeah. So I was on a trip. Uh, one of my, one of my friends is here and he's laughing and we were, we were together. It was me, PK, Ralph Seg, Josh, Lloyd, 
all whom are actually going to be like walking together. We're going to be walking together at my wedding soon. Amazing. Um, yeah, but I was with my with my bros, and we we were like, let's explore. You know, and we're in the, we're in this space where it's like all this ultimate newfound freedom, and you know, so we head over to to Montreal, and we were coming back, and it was a really like deep snowstorm, and we're just trying to trek on back and just be home. And an 18-wheeler truck, like, literally smashed right in front of us and almost took us out. Wow. And we got on the other side of that, and I think we, we were hit with reality, and we were sobered really quickly. And we just began to, like, honestly just repent and just pray and cry out to God. And, and I think it hit everyone in that car, you know, what would happen if if this had ended another way hmm. and it's like what would the what would it be said like that we had done or who we were the mark that we would have left and i think we realized we were we were running so far in the opposite direction of what we were supposed to do mm. and the people then the people that we were supposed to be we were like so focused on the temporary pleasures that we didn't even realize like there's more life to live and in all truth and honesty if this life should end today where would we go what would what would the testimony of our lives be and i think that it just brought a big perspective switch for all of us and helped us to like really just begin to like live in purpose and, hmm. and live live every day as if honestly it's the last one and give everything whether it be to our family whether it be to our whatever it is that we were serving at the time school church um job like whatever it was we realized like we have to give our very best because who knows what tomorrow holds hmm. yeah that's so wise yeah it's actually incredible that in that moment that all of you were mature enough and wise enough yeah. to acknowledge the depth of your life yeah and how important that was yeah so many people don't think about all the people who continue to do the like warnings come and they continue to do those things until right. eventually they don't get another chance right um right and and when i look at that i look at that as kind of like um as like grace it is you know to to be in a place where you can make a mistake mm -hmm. and still be here mm -hmm. to correct course correct yeah um, it was like a gift because what that did is it led you to kind of a next phase, which is realignment. Mm -hmm. And in that place of realignment, you became active in this amazing, with this amazing crew, this, yeah. this, uh, this movement called Campus, Campus Rush. Rush. And I remember when y'all started all of that, mm -hmm. you know, I was hearing about this thing that was going on. Wow. And, um, and you know tell tell me a little bit more about that yeah so i mean a year or so after that um we all kind of came together my best friend pk said he wanted he had heard so and felt so strongly to start a ministry on campus and asked if i would be the worship pastor and worship leader and i said yes because i'm like i'm there i'm here for you <laughs> but i'm like this is this is a big jump because at that point in time i hadn't really been leading worship much really much of anywhere and so that was like um my first big break it really was um and in such like a big role and capacity and we just have seen so many great things through that obviously great albums um yahweh like souls and mm. lives touched um a lot of travel we went to the uk we've been to germany all through the states and just like also seen the the community expand like it going from being a thing in ottawa to being a thing in canada to being a thing basically across the world where people like fly in when we have like conferences and and so it was just honestly just an honor to really like be a part of that startup and i think it also gave um space for my voice to be heard mm. it gave it gave it gave a place for me to be myself mm -hmm. i didn't have to like be like anybody else or or try to fit in, I could be myself because we were creating that culture. And so that mm. was that was honestly a pivotal moment in my life. And I think that that opportunity made me who I am today. Mm. Literally, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's so beautiful, man. I, you know, I love to hear the gratitude in your heart because when you think about the opportunity to be yourself yeah. and that being an, a designed intentionally, yeah. you know, 
that's fantastic. You talk about it being a culture, yeah. like a culture that you were creating, yeah. that Campus Rush was creating intentionally. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to ever live into something like that, mm. where something is being designed, a floor is being carved out right. for, for someone to be themselves. Yes. I think we crave that as humans. And like the, the validation we spoke about mm. earlier, that's something we need. We need, even for me as a, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business leader, there are times when I have to go, you know what, it's time for me to step back mm. and allow people to be themselves. Mm. Because if you want a space that's equitable and you want a space that's comfortable, right. a space that's safe, people need to feel as though they can, they can be who they are. Yes. So that's a blessing that you're able to do that. And I know that yes. it led to you starting to ask yourself questions like, what would it look like if I started to lean into my music? Yeah. If I started to write, what would it look like if Ryan put out some music? Yeah. And so talk to me about what that looked like. Yeah. Um, that's so, that's so interesting. Obviously like my whole life been working on music and I think also really discovering myself, finding myself. And I think I hit that space. Um, I think it was around 2018. I hit that space where I, I had some material, I had some music and, and I had, um, a sound and a message I wanted to share. I called my my bro, my boy Clayton, who uh, also produces most of my stuff, and we um, just began to to work and and tap a vein and try and find a sound. And we came with No Limits and Jehovah and a whole EP yeah. called um, David's Heart out of that. And yeah, literally when we were doing it, I was telling him, I'm like, I don't know if this will work. I am just <laughs> trying. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm just trying, I'm seeing if, if people would want to listen to me, if people would gravitate towards my voice. Um, I, I had no level of surety about what would happen out of that. And mm. I, and I, and I'm happy I didn't go in with certain expectations because right. really and truly the, like the word of God says he's able to like do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask, think That's or imagine. Right. And so it's like, I literally out of that out of no limits and those songs are declarations if you ever get a chance to hear them like literally saying like there's nothing that god can't do through us and and he's defending us and fighting for us those songs mean so much to me in retrospect because it's like they're so true and i think that um yeah it was just it was a tester i'm like hey will people worship to this would would this bless someone because it's blessed me and and i think that out of that genuine space we were able to see a lot of people gravitate towards that and like push my my solo um ministry even further and like being able to first place i went was paris mm -hmm. in um september 2019 yes i went to paris and and that was a great experience and then was able to go to new york and i think the two last places i went um, in terms of visiting churches and, and ministries, this the first one was the the church that I started singing in. When you were a kid. In Columbus, what? Ohio. Did they put money in your pocket again this time? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing, the funny thing is when I joined when I joined that church, it was a very small church. Mm. And when we had left, it was an it was a medium sized church. Returning back to it as a very big church wow. and so it was kind of surreal like it felt full circle and the very last place I went um, was Atlanta and I believe that was also symbolic because right after that the pandemic hit and we were told to stay home <laughs> yeah that yeah the pandemic um, as we all know is has uh, shifted our psyche yeah as a globally has shifted yeah. our like our psyche yeah and uh, businesses have closed um, it's brought a lot of sadness and despair and confusion. But for you, it was like pandemic prosperity. Yes, sir. Because in the face of all those things, yeah. you heard a voice that said yeah. something big is going to happen. Yes. Talk to us about what that, yeah. what that was all about. Honestly, um, man, just coming into that period of the pandemic, I believe that was one of the most difficult times of my life. Um, just like being home and... You know, all that was like, I think even before that, I was just entering into a difficult space. Um, but it was interesting because when the year had started, I was telling my family, I was telling um, everyone close to me, I'm like, I feel like something big's gonna happen. Mm. And and I, f and I was telling them, I feel like it's gonna be like an overnight thing. 
Mm. Um, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's gonna be like a dragged out thing. Like it feels like, and like I'm gonna wake up one day and it's gonna be like, what in the world just happened? And I was telling people out there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told. Funny enough, I told my brother. I'm like, I'm gonna get 10,000 followers on Instagram. Like that was a big deal to me. I'm like, because at the time I maybe had four, and he's like, you can't just get 10,000 <laughs> followers on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, I was just saying these things. I think that part of it was um, positive declarations, like declaring the world that you want to live in. But I also think that I, I felt it. Like you know, like you feel like you're birthing something, like you feel like you're on the edge of something, like you've conquered a certain level of something, and it's like, there's something on the ed- on the other side of this, like I'm not dying here, I'm not, we're not staying at where we are. So it's like, if this is where we are now, I felt something had to be on the other side of it, and something was, and that was tribal, Mav City, and just a lot of great stuff. <laughs> yeah, and in what's, <laughs> it's funny how loosely you utter those things, yeah. but these are like Tribal, big monumental yeah, things <laughs> that that, uh, that um, yeah. you've been able to accomplish. Yeah. Um, tell us the story about how you actually were introduced yeah. to Mav City yeah. and Tribal. Yeah, so I think two things were happening at the same time. Um, on one hand, I my producer Clay was like, "You should work with this girl," and and at the time I was working on Jehovah. And I listened to her stuff. I was like, I don't really have time. And but I found out she had gone to a camp with Mav City. Um, and I I I thought about going, but I didn't go. And I said, you know what? At the very least, Clay has told me to to work with this girl. I'm gonna just like set up a session and write with her and see what she knows. Pick her brain. Her name was Grace Smart. And so that was happening on one side. Um, and funny enough, as soon as we were supposed to meet and write. Um, The pandemic hit literally that week. And so we go from having to write and her telling me we're going to meet on FaceTime. And I'm like, this is bogus. Like, I have never written at that point, never written a song on FaceTime. I am not about this. This is so, like, silly. But I'm like, and I I don't know this person. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, how do you don't start relationships on FaceTime? But I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm let's just do it. I mean, we have no other choice. Out of that, we wrote many songs. Um, and then mm. she told me, hey, is it okay if I send these to, to Tony? And I'm like, who, who is Tony? And she's like, that's the head of Maverick City Music. And I'm like, wait a second, what? On the other hand, Chandler Moore, who is like a close friend and had been visiting even CR, was talking to the other head of Maverick City, mm. JJ, and was telling him, this guy's amazing, this guy's anointed, like, you gotta put him on, like, you gotta give him an opportunity. So it's like, those two streams, like, collided, and man, God was really looking out for me um, because he was he was not just saying it once, he was saying it twice. Um, mm. and, and then that opportunity really opened. They allowed me to come to some online writing camps. And so we extended from, from my first kind of FaceTime thing to writing with complete strangers all across the world on Zoom and people like in Africa and Europe and in Australia on different time zones. And we wrote Still Holy, um, we wrote a lot of great songs on those camps um, that we later recorded in person. And that I think I went down for my first live um, recording slash writing thing in, in, uh, in November of 2020. And so that was, that was amazing and felt like a dream, to be honest. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Now these, um, these writing camps, what, what happens in them? And, yeah. Was like was this a new experience for you? Did you learn something you had never learned before? Because you'd already mm-hmm. written songs before yes, that. Yes. So what what were those like? What are those like? I'm I, sure most of us don't know. Yes, I think I think um it's a space where you can collaborate, um, a space where you can grow, a space where you can learn, and a space where you can you can be yourself without being judged. Um and I think like relationship is the forefront, which is kind of crazy because you do not know most of the people. Um, but the the environment is conducive in the, in such a way that you can just share like, hey, this is what I'm going through, or this is what like this is where I'm at, or this is what I think would be cool if we spoke about, and we begin to like write songs for 
the world for the generation for our communities like as small and as big as that and it's just it's just amazing like what happens in those spaces where creatives kind of come together and just begin to to share and begin to create together because i believe we weren't mm. meant to create alone and so there's so, like there's something so beautiful that comes when someone's like says well what did you think of that this way or have you thought of that word or what about this melody and then it's like we begin to form something so beautiful and it's mm. and it's it's even more beautiful i believe because i'm a Ghanian kid who lives in Canada with someone maybe a Spanish person who lives in Orlando and someone maybe a right. white young young lady who lives in Atlanta and it's like we all have so many different experiences but we bring that together to really reflect the heart of God which is unity which is unity and so it's 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 great um those spaces are are really great we get to write we get to to just sing we get to worship and crack jokes like all of the above <laughs> all of the above that's fantastic. You, earlier we were talking about how different life experiences, you know, make our immediate situations rich because yeah. we can pull from those. Yeah. It's interesting how you're mentioning too, from a cultural perspective too, when you mix different cultures mm -hmm. and different cultural experiences, it makes situations rich. Oh yeah. You know, and, and I, we forget that. Like as artists, we also forget to collaborate, you know, right. everybody, you know, there's a certain kind of, uh, you know, there's, there's sometimes the ego gets in the way right. as creators, for sure, you know, because being able to create is actually a very important thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing that, um, that I think is a part of the human experience, yes. a very integral part of the human experience. And if yes. we get to create together, a lot of times we're creating better things together. I agree. You know, so it's great that you have that experience at yeah. MAV because some of these people have, you know, a lot of followers yeah. and, you know, they have a they have an identity that's known. Mm -hmm. But to hear that you all come together yeah. in a safe space and collaborate, I think that's a lesson for anyone yeah. who's listening to this is that, you know, find a way to collaborate with people. 100%. It's very important to be, to be with like like-minded people. Like, like what one person can achieve two people can achieve that times 10. Yeah. The more people you add, like that's the power of community. And also I believe like as a believer, like that's heaven. Like mm. when we get to heaven, like there isn't a Ghanaian heaven and a Bayesian heaven and a Spanish and a white heaven. Like, no, like there is like this beautiful thing where every nation, every tribe, every color, every like, every story comes together and like literally glorifies the father and so that's like I, it's 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 it touches my heart and i know that that pleases god for, for for that to be a thing for people to come together for there to be love and not division for I there to that. be unity and not hate like there's so many things we see literally throughout the news and throughout the world and and i believe that that is just like an example of like what God, the heart of the Father, what he really wants. He wants us to be together. He wants us to be like working together, caring for one another, looking out for one another, supporting each other, building each other up rather than tearing each other down. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yes, sir. Well, it's funny amidst all of that safety and all that collaboration, you look around the room yeah. and you see these accomplished musicians. That's right and you start to feel fear yeah. and doubt that yeah. imposter syndrome that voice that says yeah. you're just little king man. not big king man, that's talk to thing. us about that man that is a real thing and i i funny enough i never really experienced it like that till i stepped into such a space and the thing is when you're surrounded by so much creativity mm. and so much like knowledge and so much giftings it actually brings out insecurities yeah because like unknowingly you can start to compare yourself like well i can't do that or i don't sound like that or i haven't done that or i don't know about that or you i'm not known like this person and i think that those are things that are tucked deep within the heart that for me i'm like what is going on <laughs> Yeah. At my first at my first camp, I think I was the first time I felt some level of anxiety mm. and I was able to like overcome it by just doing it and I found it wasn't as scary as it had seemed. But I got another call and that was to a Juneteenth writing camp. And I look at the Google Docs and I, or, or Google Sheet or whatever it was, and I see Israel Houghton, Kirk Franklin, <laughs> Donnie McClurkin. Jonathan McReynolds I am like I am not going to this I'm like what in the world like why would you 
Why would you sign me up for my second thing to be with all the greats and the legends that I've been listening to my whole life? I'm wow. not going. Like, I, I told myself, I told my family, and some people were like, well, okay. And, like, the people that were closest to me were like, you are being an idiot. You need to go. Like, don't be afraid. And I think mm. at that moment I had to look within myself and, like, what is, like, causing that fear, you know? And it's like, mm. what? What in the world is causing that? Because we have not been given the spirit of fear, fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Like, what is causing that? Yeah. And I think for me, it's that as you go into a new level, um, it's easy to be afraid because you've never done that before. Mm. It's the it's the fear of the unknown. Like, I don't know. And in my case, I'm like, I don't want to sing in Israel and be like, who invited this guy? <laughs> you know, that's like it's the fear of the unknown, and that's me being really honest. Like I was stepping into something that I'd never seen. I never even like thought like, oh, next year I'm gonna be working with Israel. Oh, no, like I never had thought about that. It, it hadn't been something that was at the forefront of my mind, and so it felt like it was coming so quickly that I didn't even have a chance to process it. And so, it, in fear, I'm like, "No, like let me let me pace and maybe try again next year." And, and it's like, no, like this life that we live, like you will feel fear, you know. But I think the the solace and the peace that we find is like you're not going into that alone. Alone, exactly. Yes, you're not going into that alone. Exactly. You have your friends, you have your family, you have. The, your loved ones, but you also have heaven backing. You have angels. You have the spirit of God within you. That's literally carrying you. Like you never show up in a place alone. Mm. You never show up in in a scenario alone, and you never get invited to a place you're not supposed to be in. If you got invited, you are supposed, supposed to, to be, be there. there. And that is something that I had to I believe. Love that. I saw a post that week that said, "You know what? Be underqualified. Um, be un uneducated. Be unsure. Be like." be afraid and do it anyways mm. and do it anyways like so what if you don't think you have it all together so what if like there's somebody who's better than you or you perceive that they're better than you it's like none of that matters like you bring something so unique to the table mm. that they had to invite you and if that's what it is then be yourself and be yourself unashamed un unapologetic be yourself wholeheartedly you know and that's something that i like i learned that like literally last year like i learned that i learned that within this year rather i learned that and so it's been a it's been a mind-changing um thought process and it just helps to like just push fear to the side and really just be exactly who god has called you to be hmm. well if um if this if this soul can be nourished that is food my man yes sir that is so deep yeah. um i just you know when you talk about being underqualified, mm -hmm. unprepared, all these things that you yeah. mentioned, yeah. we I think we often feel that way. Mm. But every day we go through life, we close our eyes, we wake up, and we're still here. Yes. And it's amazing how hard the, whoever you call it, but I call it the evil one, yeah. works yeah. to to literally turn you against you. True. What would it look like if you said no to that opportunity? It would, I mean, yeah. like you, we might not be here talking right now right. about this particular thing. That's true. And because you said yes, you got to work with arguably mm -hmm. one of the, like the best gospel writers of our time All in Israel time. Houghton. Yes. Talk to us about what that was like. Man, that experience was amazing. Um, and so, funny enough, going into that camp, it wasn't, I don't believe there was anything concrete set up, at least not with him. Mm. Um, so I was sitting I was sitting at a table, and I'd gotten invited over to another table. So I go there, and I see Israel on the right-hand side. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and Brandon Lake's there, and he's like, this is Ryan O'Fay. He has Africa in his hands. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, amen. You know, I'm just, I'm all for it. And Israel's like, oh, really? And we just started just kind of hitting it off. He's so, so cool and so down to earth. And, and we're talking and I'm, I'm like, well, I'm from Ghana. And he's like, well, he's been to Ghana and he goes all the time. And he's been to Nigeria and we just got start talking. And funny enough, we had actually, Campus Rush and Israel Houghton had done a virtual conference in the UK. So we both sent videos in. So we spoke about that. And then at the end of it all, he's like, hey, listen, you're so, so great to speak to. Uh, do you want to write tomorrow? 
I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, and, man. That, and that was that. In that session, we wrote um, Freedom Looks Good On You, and we wrote two other songs, three songs in the span of three hours. And it's worth noting that usually in a three-hour session, some people don't even finish one song. So he is unreal. Like, <laughs> and it's just crazy. I think that that was an inspiring moment for me because I'm watching him and I'm like, I'm like, man, if you can be this accomplished and this far along your journey and still be that passionate, like we have mm. no excuses. Like we're just starting out. We can never, ever say I'm too tired. I don't feel like it. Like, no, like he has done so much and he was chasing it. Like he's just about to put out That's his first lie. album. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. And so that really, that really inspired me. It was a great experience. See that what you were witnessing was a perf was a person who was sitting in the middle of God's will for their life. Yeah. In the middle of their destiny. Yes. And I think, you know, all of us need to be um, conscious that we can be in that place. Yeah. That you can be twenty five years in and still love what you do. And that's encouraging to me personally, you know, because as somebody who is an artist and an entrepreneur, you know, some days you get tired. Yeah. But you, I think that forces someone like me to go, wait a second, am I actually doing what I'm supposed to do? Or right. am I just pushing the needle? Right. Am I just pushing the pencil? Or am I actually doing what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. And I think, you know, when it comes to art, when it comes to music, when it comes to life in general, mm. we all have to get to a point where we do understand what we're here for. Mm. I tell people all the time, whether it's clients, my team, friends, that, um, you know, the greatest, the greatest question, existential question we need to have answers to, or the answer to is, who am I? Yes. It starts there. And someone like Israel understands mm -hmm. that this is like, this is a gift he's been given, mm -hmm. not just so that he has the gift, but to give it away. Yes. And that's what I love about what, what you all are doing at MAV and Tribal is you're using your gifts and you're giving it back to all of yes, us. Yes. There's a reason why today I go online and one of the videos has 28 million views. That's, right. that's insane. Unreal. That's insane. But those, that's 28 million, um, you know, uh, souls and minds and hearts mm -hmm. that are being encouraged by purpose. Yes. By a sense, a deep sense of purpose. Yes, and I really, you know, I really commend you for that. And I, wow. you know, it's, it's something that, um, that I'll continue to chase, yeah. you know, I'll continue to chase after my purpose hmm. and I'll continue to ask the people around me to hold me accountable, to really help me to stay where I need to be, yeah. you know, because sometimes life gets, gets difficult. Mm -hmm. And you need somebody every once in a while to say, 100%. hey, look, you know, you're, you're really great at this. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yes. You know, so it's great that his, his actions were inspiring you. Yes. Yeah. Man. One of a kind. Yes. So, you know, there are people who are watching this mm. and they're going, look, here's little King. <laughs> He's growing up like Simba. Walking with the that really was my with the warthog movie. and the meerkat. <laughs> that really you know? was, that was, a, was a legendary movie. Oh, <laughs> you know, and now he's he's big king. Right. And um, you know, you know, we were chatting one day, you and I, and I asked you for a little bit of advice, and you you had some really important things to say. Um, you said, Thomas, you know, people need to learn how to follow their dreams and do what's fully them. You said, do what's fully you. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yes, following your dreams, doing what, what's fully you, I believe, um, is not trying to conform or to be like anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even doing things because you know that people will react in a certain way to them, but it's being the pioneer in the way that you feel most authentic. Right. And so that's your sound, that's your style, that's the way you write, that's the way you speak. Like, let it be you and let it be authentically you. Like. And, and just be as transparent as possible. Like, this is who I am. This is what I'm great at. This is what I'm mm -hmm. working on. This mm -hmm. is what I struggle with. This mm -hmm. is what I've overcome. Yep. But I'm not giving you someone who I think you would like. I'm giving you the real me because that's who God blesses. And that's who can really affect someone else's life. Like, I can't be another person. I can never be like a Dante or a champ. I can only be Ryan O'Fay. And so I think that it's like, as, as we say, like, follow your dreams. I think there's, it's so easy to, to start being like, well, I saw this person follow their dreams like that. And they sounded like that, or they dressed like that, or they looked like that. And it's like, 
That may not be for you. You are to carve your own path. And so I think that that's really freeing for whoever um, listens to this just to know, like, hey, you can be you, you know, fully. And you're accepted like that. And you're impactful like that. That's beautiful. You also said something that's really powerful. Reject fear and doubt. Yeah. Whew. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah. I think... Um, so many times we were talking, you know, and, and said, what if, what if that scenario had pushed me away from writing with Israel or going down? And I think that we just see that the trade-off is just not worth it. Mm. You know, to give in to fear and, or to give in to doubt or to insecurity, it's just not worth it. It's much more worth it to throw yourself 100% in a direction that you feel like you know there's something there. And so mm. I think with everything within you, you have to really silence the, the fear, you have to silence the naysayers, you have to silence yourself sometimes uh, when you say something that's contrary to your purpose or contrary to the word of God or contrary to your destiny. Like, it just isn't worth it when you look at what will happen if I don't take it or mm -hmm. if I don't go or if I don't say anything or if I don't write versus like, what if I just give myself fully to this? Right. And so I think that I've learned like giving yourself fully to what you love and to what you were called to do. It may seem scary at the beginning, but at the end, it's kind of like, why was I so afraid of that? You know? And so I really believe that, like reject it, like with everything you can, with the, everything within you. You know, if you didn't do that, if you didn't reject fear and doubt, you wouldn't have, um, been a part of math, you wouldn't have created mm. the Juneteenth album with that right, crew. Right. And you wouldn't be nominated for a Grammy. That's right. That is such an incredible accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, whether you're selected or not, it doesn't even matter. Right. Of course, we'll all rejoice with you. We want you to win. Yes, sir. But ultimately, just getting to this point for you. Mm. It's such a fantastic thing, and I know yeah. you're you're a former athlete too. Yeah. You're a competitor. You want to win, oh, you know. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we like for us, brother, you've already won. Yes. You, in so many ways, you've yeah. already won. And you said something to me that's so powerful. You said to me, "Life is full of challenges, mm. but you don't magnify the issues. Mm -hmm. You magnify your Creator." That's right. What does that mean? Man, I mean, it's just a perspective. Like, we always hear about the glass being half full or half empty. And, you know, I was doing a devotion, um, and, it, and it was on a day that I personally was just, I just had enough. And I had enough of the most little things, like, like your plane getting pushed back two hours or, mm. or your bag not being able to be paid for it, something like it was just a lot of those and I was like man this is a rough day and as I began to like like uh, put myself into the devotion and, and just spend time with God to just kind of recenter my mind um, it said you have so many things to be grateful for hmm. don't let the little things take like take that away and I think that for us as we go through this life it's like we need to always put our mind on the bigger things, the better things, like, like, like set our, set our hope, set our gaze on the better moments than the worst moments, because you will endure both. Like you will experience both in this life, but it's like, these things are temporary, hmm. but there is someone who is eternal. You know, these things will pass away. They'll come, they'll go, but there's someone who never changes. There's someone who loves you more than you know. There's someone who cares about you more than you know. There's someone who will allow a door to be shut in your face but will, that door will actually redirect you to an open pasture and so it's wow. like it's yeah. like That's with that great. understanding it's like man i'm not gonna let my current circumstances get the best of me like joy is not a function of where you are like it's just it's just a it's just a being like we we can get happy you know when our favorite team wins or or you get a part of a, a Grammy nominated album or, you know, you, it, it makes you happy, but that's not joy. Like joy is a decision. Yes. And it's like, because I fixed my eyes on Jesus, like I fixed my eyes on God. Like I fixed my eyes, not even on music or like, or on what I'm able to do or how people react to me or treat me or what they think of me. I literally set it on 
my creator, it's like, that's joy. Like, I'll wake up happy, mm. like, no matter what the bills are, no matter what the Instagram stats are, like, joy is a function, it's not a function of what's going on. It's just a state of being. Yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's what it really means to, like, to, to magnify your creator and not what you're going through. Hmm. Yeah. So much wisdom, man. Yes, sir. So much wisdom. I love that. I love that. Joy is a deep thing. Yeah. You know, it's a thing that's in your soul, mm -hmm. deep in your soul. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's one, one scripture that I love and it's, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. That's where we get our strength from. And what's beautiful about your music and your pursuits is that it actually does bring joy yeah. back and remind the listener that you can have joy even in the face of trials and that you are important and that if you keep praying, which is such a beautiful song that you've written, mm -hmm. um, you will find that joy. Yes. You know, we are living proof. You are living proof of what holding on can do, that you can hold on and still find joy. Mm -hmm. You create soulful music. I want to understand why soulful mm -hmm inspired music is so important for us as human beings why is why is it so powerful yes to create soulful music yeah music uh, in general we always speak about it can literally affect your your mood and your way of being uh, just with the chords or or the beat or whatever it may be now i believe it's even elevated when you add a spiritual element into it and you just begin to like declare things over yourself or over the world or i really believe it just begins to change um change the world that we live in when we begin to sing things of positivity things of truth um things that that are above what we face and so i believe like the music we make um it not only helps people in the current state that they're in because i believe there's that aspect where it's like it helps you get through the day but i also think that it shifts the world we live in hmm. like we literally are emitting like the praises of god you know, and, and, and I believe that he's delighted in that. I believe that he says, like, listen, I agree with this. Like, I'm, I love what's going on down here. Like, you know, like, I love, I love how you guys are joining together. I love how you're joining as it would be in heaven. And I really believe that invites mm -hmm. heaven to earth. And that means that we experience healing, you know, whether we have sicknesses or ailments, we experience freedom from, ab like, addiction, abuse, whatever that may be mm. we receive um like knowledge and empowerment like the ability to do what we what we would never think we could do i think all of these things in my life have been tied to the sound to the sound of of worship the sound of the soul the sound of heaven i think it's all been tied to that and and it's like music is the most one of the most powerful things in the world it carries a message but also carries a spirit yes it does like it, carry, it carries a spirit there's a kind of spirit behind a sound anytime that there's a sound and so music has changed my life worship has changed my life and i know that it's it can change everyone else's too <laughs> yeah yeah well ryan you are uh, a remarkable young man yes, sir. uh you are a son you are a friend yes, your fiance soon to be husband <laughs> that's coming soon which is fantastic i love you <laughs> <laughs> i love to hear that yes. that's fantastic you are a musician um and you are a soul rebel man keep yes, doing sir. what you're doing yes, we had a good chat earlier we talked about how when you know a man or woman has a great calling there's mm -hmm. always someone or something that wants to pull away at that yeah. thing. Be vigilant yes, because sir. you've got something so special. Yes, sir. And um, you've got a whole herd of people who have you Man. in their hearts and prayers. I love that. And um, you know, you, you got a whole city that's excited to, to celebrate as you win this Grammy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Honestly, looking forward to that. Um, Jubilee Juneteenth obviously a Grammy nominated album. I'm a part of it. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, super excited, never, never anticipated that, never planned for it. Um, but I was told by Tony and Jay, they said, this is going to be huge. It's going to be big right up there with old church basement. And so it's just so nice um, to see like, like I know heaven is pleased. I know God is pleased, but it's nice to see that people are also recognizing that and my efforts and, and contributions. And so it's an honor. Thank you so much for having me, Thomas. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was great. And 
You're the man, brother. Likewise. Yes, sir. Likewise. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm super proud of you, man. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. your time today. I know you're a busy you. man. Yes, sir. Bro. Bless you. It's been a blast. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed sessions. Like what you've heard? Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a session. Also, be sure to follow Studio 2020 on Instagram and have a peek at our website to learn more about our offerings and our 6,000 square foot studio located in the heart of Canada's capital. Today's a good day. Make art memorable.